Uh, now, don't be alarmed because I feel that there is going to be a lot of dead bees. And I'll tell you why. Hang on, make this noise. I'll tell you why I think it's going to be a lot of dead bees. It's because this hive in particular has uh, a lot of bees of winter physiology in it uh, this year in the fall. And it had a lot of summer bees in it. So in other words, a lot of summer bees died off of natural causes. And look at that, how they've just accumulated down here. Wow, that's why I really like having these upper entrances down here in case things go bad down here. It can kind of clog up. I don't even know if we can get that out of there. Ah, nope, we can't. Let's use our hive tool. So what's happened is it's gotten a little soggy and wet from the dying bees. It's not bad, it's not that wet, but you can see the moisture on it. Look at that. So I got most of the bees off. I wanted to show you this moisture, talk about this moisture. You see it glistening here. Um, so this moisture is something that I have defeated. I don't have to worry about this moisture. Well, you're saying, well, no, there is moisture in the hive. Do you know why? It's because I put this piece of cardboard in there. I closed off my bottom board. This is the only hive that I did it to. So the other hives, um, when you have more passive screen bottom boards at the bottom and a winter bee kind at the top, you don't ever see this kind of moisture. But this is more moisture getting trapped. So that's why I don't like to close off my bottom boards uh, during the winter, because I'll get this kind of moisture. Obviously, it didn't hurt the bees. They're in good shape, but still, I don't have to deal with moisture anymore unless I close my bottom board off on the bottom. Wow, you, you saw the moisture in there. But I got to tell you, I wasn't doing a full inspection uh, because it's still too cold for me to get into a hive and inspect like that. What I was doing was I was uh, doing an experiment all winter on this particular hive to see what kind of effects it would have on the moisture in the hive if I slid a piece of cardboard under the hive uh, on top of the bottom board all winter long. And I was surprised right in the beginning of winter, I actually uh, took the bottom board out, made a video about it, and there was already moisture early on in the winter that had dripped down onto the bottom piece of cardboard that I put in there. Now this doesn't happen when with all my other hives where I use an open screen bottom board because a lot of you ask me, you know, should I close off my bottom screen board during the winter time? And I do a little bit of both, but in this case, um, all my hives had open screen bottom boards uh, this winter, except this one. And so you can see in that video how much moisture is there. And I think a good question to ask where did that moisture come from? It did not come from the candy board, the winter bee kind that was on top there. That wasn't it. I tested the moisture. It was just water. That's the heat of the colony that's so warm. And remember those cold days that we had, how bad it was? It was just 30 below zero hitting the side of that box. Well, the bees made so much heat in their cluster because it's a very big colony. And I'll show you that in an upcoming video. But they made so much heat that contrasted with the outdoor temperature that it looks like to me that moist, mo much of the moisture developed on the wall, not so much the top. I'm counting on top moisture to help uh, make that candy board more palatable for the bees to eat. So when it comes to this experiment I did, I'm like, wow, I don't feel comfortable blocking off my bottom boards. Now, I know many of you do, many of you swear by, you know, how your technique is. And that's fine, we all have different techniques. But I had a guy write me, a beekeeper wrote me and said, hey, my, the inside of my hives uh, around the edges of the wood looks very moldy. Now in that case, when there's mold and, and such, it's probably more like mildew than anything else. But that means there's too much moisture in the hive. In other words, that amount of water in that hive like that is, is really producing that mold and mildew. And here's what the number one cause is from. You're not gonna like this. It's caused from a hive that's too small. A large colony 
it's able to control the moisture. They just let it drip through, they air it out, they, the heat of the colony takes care of it, right? But when a colony gets really small in the wintertime, in fact, when clusters die because they're too small, you'll see that mildew, that kind of a, uh, a gray color mildew that will grow on the dead bees. So some of that mold and mildew actually is because your hive was too small, they couldn't take care of themselves, and that's why you're seeing it. And in that case, um, there are times when you want to reuse that or get it off of there. I always tell people it's best to use something like vinegar. I don't like using uh, bleach. Bleach is more uh, able to control things that are on a solid surface like porcelain, a toilet, a sink. Uh, but it, when it comes to wood, I've, I've studied and read that um, using bleach on wood actually will make it worse, the mold. So vinegar works really good. Now, it's hard to get the stain off once you have that mildew stain on there. It's gonna be on there for a long time. I don't worry about that stain, it happens. Sometimes the moisture get abs gets absorbed in the wood and it's just gonna be uh, that way. It probably didn't affect the bees. Now, I have some strong colonies where I had uh, boards on the top, feeder boards, uh, either my uh, spring feeder board or my winter be kind, and I can see some mildew uh, stain on that. It doesn't bother me, I just leave it on there it, it, um, it doesn't affect the bees at all. Now, if you're in the middle of winter, coming out of winter, and you're starting to see a lot of moisture in your hive, you don't know what to do about it, the simplest thing to consider is you've got to find a way to actually give more ventilation in that hive. Moisture uh, in the hive that's trapped, and there's too much in there, that's what's calling, causing this mildew and this mold. So, Number one, the first thing you can do is you can try to open up your hive a little bit more. Now, the easiest way to open up your hive is to maybe open up your entrance reducer. Now, if you've got an entrance reducer to keep mice out during the winter time, you can actually uh, open that up more to let more air come into the hive, especially if you have that solid bottom board. That's what's trapping all this air inside your hive like that. There's other things you could try to do as well, is that you can clear off, clean off the dead bees that naturally fall onto the bottom board during winter. So cleaning those off is gonna, they hold moisture. So by cleaning them off, you're gonna allow things to dry out a little bit better. So clean out all the dead bees off the bottom board. Now, some people ask me, should I drill some vent holes in my hives? And they'll put little uh, three quarter inch holes, maybe up in a super or a deep or something. I don't like that because I've tried it before many years ago, but it lets too much moisture in in very foggy, uh, wet weather, like if it's rainy outside. In Illinois, we're gonna get a, we get sideways wind. And so if it's raining sideways and that hole is there, it's gonna rain water into my hive. So I don't like that. Water dripping down your hive can run in that hole too. So never been a good fan of holes in my hive. I tend to want to seal off all the holes. In my case, again, this works so well for me, and it may not be exactly your take on it, may what may not be what you want, but what, what works well for me, open screen bottom board all winter, a winter be kind at the top that has a little tiny ventilation notch on it, and I've actually uh, made some videos where you can see that the moisture coming, excess moisture coming out of the hive is actually making icicles right there on that top cover. I thought it was dripping off the top cover, but upon closer examination, it wasn't. Look at that moisture that is developed by just moisture coming out of that winter be kind hole and collecting here. And if you look, you can see bees actually moving in there. There was no ice or water on top. It, the icicles started right there where the moisture was uh, being exited out of the hive. And so you might say, well, the bees needed that moisture that was letting all the hot air out. Well, no, I'm gonna show you a video coming up where you'll see how many bees are in there. It's unbelievable. You'll see that they don't have any problem controlling the moisture and the heat. They're getting rid of the moisture in the stale air. Now, many people talk about the stale air in there. Stale, moist air is really what's hurting your bees in the wintertime. It really is the stale, moist air. <laughs> so getting the moisture out and getting a little bit of fresh air that they can kind of pull into that hive 
it really helps it so much. So now that you know how to deal with moisture, this is something you need to really be prepared for and take care of before you hit next winter as well. Hey, I just made a great video for you guys, really important on not killing your queen during your inspections. I've got a video on how to protect your queen. I'll see you guys right over here.